Hello Mark, I've taken your file, so thank you for providing that, and I've just cut it down to a much smaller size so that it's going to be easier to deal with. So it just looks like that. So it's got enough of this information in there that you're having difficulties with so that we can figure out what's going on. So I'm going to take you through the process of creating a custom XML file type to deal with a file like this. First thing you need to go to do is to create your custom XML file type. So we go to File, Options, File Types, and then over to the right there you can click on New. And I'm going to pick the XML Embedded Content. The reason I'm picking that one is because I want to use the HTML processor to handle all that information that's inside the C data. And, allowing, and choosing this file type allows me to run the HTML file type inside the XML file type. So I can process an XML file, but then in addition process the data again using an HTML filter, it's nested. I click on OK. I give it some names. I'll just use your initials, MS. My file type is XML, so I'm going to click on Next. What I then do is I have to define the settings and I can base them on the existing file. So I'm going to browse and I'm going to pick that XML file and then click on next. Now the first thing that happens, and it was fortunate that my example picked this up actually because I, otherwise I might have missed this, is that the selected file is not a valid import format. So you have to ask yourself why is it not? What's wrong with this XML file? Because when I looked at it in the text editor it looked reasonably okay. So I cancel that dialog. I then open a Firefox browser. And the reason I open Firefox is because I can take the XML file and just drop it into Firefox like that. And this is quite handy because when you do that, Firefox is very good at giving you something, some idea of what might be wrong with the file. And in this case, you can see that the file has not been well formed and it tells you where the error actually is. In this case, it's at line number 41, column 23. It doesn't tell me what's wrong with it, it just says that it's not well formed. So I can go and find it. So line 41, column 23. So I open that up in my text editor. I'm using a product called um, Edipad Pro. Um, and I go down to line 41. In fact, I can see it. it's just there. So line 41, I can see actually because my head text editor colors the C data blue. And I can see that that particular one is not colored blue. And that's because the syntax for this is incorrect. It should have, oh, why can't I edit that? Something's still got hold of it. Maybe it was Firefox. Nope, something else has still got hold of it. Maybe it's Studio. Maybe I need to open it again. Something is holding onto this file and stopping me from editing it. Oh, that's better. I didn't get a message this time. Okay, so I need to add an opening and closed square bracket. And when I do that, you can see that my editor immediately tells me, yes, that's okay. I get a nice blue color there. Um, this, that should now be okay. So I can save that file to correct that change. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to make sure that your XML file is well formed and the one you've got from your client is not. So what you then have to do, go back to Studio, we go back to the file types dialog, create our new file type, exactly as we did before. Call it MS, MS. Click on next, define the settings. So I browse for that file. This time, hopefully when I click on next, it's gonna work and it did. This time there's nothing wrong with the file or nothing much. Let me click on okay and finish it. Now to test it, the easiest thing to do is to use the preview box down the window in case you didn't know about this. So I browse and I pick the, pick the test XML and then I can just preview it. And this is quite handy because I can very quickly see what changes I need to make to file. So what I'm getting is pretty much what you showed in your screenshot. Um, and so I've got all of this stuff lumped down in, in big sections and it's not what I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell the file type to process these C data sections here using the HTML processor. So I go to here again in my MS file type, go down to embedded content 
tell it to process the embedded content using the HTML processor. It's in C data section, so I'll leave that, and I should be able to preview the file now. So what that should do now is it should go through and separate out the sections which it has done and broken them all up, but it's still not particularly helpful. It's not exactly what I want. You can see that I've got all these lumps down here. Now what has changed here is this time is Studio has converted those XML entities to tags because that's exactly what it's going to do. But unfortunately, when you have the an HTML file containing information like this, if I open up in a text editor, where it uses X, X, XML entities, these will be handled as text inside, a, um, inside an editor. It will not be handled as HTML content. So you need to convert these, or your client needs to go back and correct the file in the first place to give you a well-formed XML, and also to provide you one with XML entities that have already been converted into proper tags. Or you can do it yourself if you know how to do it. If you only got one file, you could do it yourself. Basically, at LT semicolon, is in effect that symbol. So you would have to go through and change all these manually, which will be quite a task, particularly in a big file. If you have a decent text editor, it can probably do this for you. So I can go to convert XML entities to reserve characters. And when I do that, it's just going to change them all for me, which is quite handy um, because now they're all good for me to go. So I can just press Control S to save that file, close it, come back to Studio, um, and when I preview this time, you can see the file is broken up as I would like to handle it. So this is this is much better. Um, so quite a bit of work for you to do there. What you have got is still this stuff. But all of this does not look like anything that needs to be um, handled in, in the sense of it needs translating at all. And the only way you're going to be able to handle this, unless you use the legacy embedded XML, which I wouldn't recommend you do because then you have to create tags for all of the individual little HTML codes that, that we saw there. So you'd need them for list items, you'd need them for paragraphs, you'd need them for everything, and you'd have to create them manually. So if I was you, I would go as far as I've gone here with this file. And what I would do then is, if you open the file in Studio, it's now it's going to open that file using that translation. I'm just going to do it English to German for the sake of argument. And it should use my new file type. Okay, you can see it says MS, so it's used um, the correct file type. And then it's used the embedded content for all the C data sections. And you have all these. And then all I would do is I would filter them out. So probably I'd use the advanced display filter or something like that. And in here I can use a regular expression and I can search for segments that start with, um, I don't think I need to escape this, we'll find out in a second. Apply the filter and it's going to find all of those segments that contain anything which has got these sort of code on it and then I would just lock them all. So I go down to the bottom, select the bottom one as well, just press Control L, lock them. And I would clear the filter and on the filter attributes, <coughs> excuse me, go down to the segment locking and I would take unlocked and apply the filter. And then you'll just get the stuff that you can actually handle that makes more sense. There's another one there you could probably do something with and you could get rid of that as well if you wanted to. Um, but that would be much easier to handle now. So that's basically how you would handle your file. Unfortunately, there's no quick and simple answer for you with this one. It's quite a difficult file for several reasons. It's, it's not well formed, it's badly prepared, and if I was you, I would take this back to my customer and I would see if they can do something about preparing this file properly for you so you can explain to them exactly what I've just shown you here and, you can see, and then they'll understand what the problem is. If they can't, then this is what you will have to go through in order to be able to handle this, this file in a sensible way. Um, Really, a little bit of localization knowledge is going to help you here to do things like this. It's not a simple file, but I'm afraid that's how it is. I hope that's <coughs> excuse me. I hope that's helpful anyway.